Hi, everyone. So today I'm here with one of my clients, Michelle Atlas, and I'm excited for her to share with you all what she has been learning in our work together. Um, so let me introduce Michelle. Well, hi, Michelle. Good to have you here. Hi. Thank you hi for there. being here. Uh, so let me read to you her bio. I think she has an interesting uh, background, and um, you'll learn more about her, her business towards the end of this video as well. So Michelle Atlas empowers strong, creative women to own their worth so that they can create sustainable businesses and meaningful lives around who they are. With intuition honed through her, her years of spiritual practice, in fact, Michelle, I'll have you talk about later how you spent years in a spiritual ashram. Um, and she also has a very uh, substantial transformational toolbox from the different trainings and tools that she's learned over the years. She will help you to discover the courage you did not know you have so that you can create the change you never thought it was possible in your relationship to money, to love, and to yourself. Michelle is a coach, a teacher, a speaker, and a writer. She is an ICF professional certified coach. ICF is, some of you know this, but it's International Coaching Federation, which is one of the top uh, coaching certification um, programs available. She is also a new field certified coach, a certified resilience facilitator, and I'll have you talk a bit about that later too, Michelle, and a sacred money archetypes certified coach. So Michelle, thank you so much. I'm honored to be working with you and uh, thanks for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so, I'm honored to be working with you. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you can start, I'll just kind of let you share however you would like. Um, what have you, what's, what's something that you really uh, appreciate having learned in our work together that might be helpful for those who are watching this as well? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so I think one of the most important, there are many things I've learned and that I continue to really enjoy and benefit from um, with our ongoing work. But one of the things that really has stood out for me as super important is um, ex this experience I have with you, George, where um, building a, a lucrative, sustainable business and honoring the um, self-care and um, you know spaciousness that I need to maintain my inspiration and my mm -hmm. creativity and my well-being are not um, at odds with each other at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just have this from the moment we started working together, from the moment we spoke actually before we started working together, I experienced a sense of spaciousness and um, allowance. Uh, and I felt this sort of, um, you know, just this inherent permission giving to, you know, move at my own pace and pay attention to what really works for me and stop doing things that don't work for me. And, um, and all the while, we've been able to create a level of sustainability and profit that has exceeded what my years of attempting to do this in, in a variety of other ways in the past. Mm. This is, thank you. And so maybe since you talked about this um, about the sense of balance, what has maybe what what have you seen elsewhere in terms of how people build businesses that haven't been this spacious? Maybe you can kind of talk about what uh, help us to recognize what doesn't work. <laughs> what 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 yeah what hasn't well, been working for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, everybody's different. And uh, so, you know, I mean, I know in my work with people, we always look for the individual success pattern and kind mm -hmm. of, you know, want to imitate that. So in, in my case, um, I spent, you know, the better part of five years um, pushing really hard and, mm -hmm. uh, um, f you know, just trying to master every new marketing strategy and every new business strategy that I saw in the virtual space. And you know, um, I was a voracious learner and I thought that was a good thing until I began to, um, you know, feel like I was just like frantically chasing mm. other people's ideas of, of, you know, how to create wealth and how to create a sustainable business or how to create a joyful business. I found myself um, really out of balance after several, several years of operating that way. Um, I found ironically something that, you know, came, you know, a big light bulb moment for me was when I realized that my pursuit of wealth actually was inhibiting my capacity to create sustainability. Interesting. And yeah, and so 
I realized that I needed to actually, instead of step it up even more, stretch even further, push even harder, which is what I kept feeling like I was hearing, I needed, I, I realized that my well-being and my ability to remain creative and, and inspired um, involved more of dialing it back, actually, and of rediscovering the other parts of my life, um, you know, I, that were really meaningful to me that I had completely disconnected, it had no time or energy for for years because of the way that I was approaching my business. Uh, and um, so I found that uh, the way that I had been working in the past um, did create some serendipitous and, um, you know, random significant successes. But I never really felt like I found my success, you know, my way of operating on an ongoing basis to create a more predictable, sustainable flow of revenue without so many surprises, without so many highs and lows. Yeah. Um, and that also allowed me to pay attention to who I actually am, what my particular strengths are. Uh, and um, I, I had really begun to lose big parts of what I actually have, of the best of what I actually have to offer people by operating that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I only realized it when I, I started to, you know, find myself shutting down to, to uh, the market, to, to what I, the messaging I was receiving and also, um, you know, even to parts of my work that I typically love. And it was like, wow, this is a red flag. I better pay attention. What's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I hope that others watching this will maybe become more sensitized to um, the misalignment that, that it's easy for us to get into because like you said, the marketing messages keep telling us we should be doing this, should be doing that. And a lot of times, you know, should be chasing the seven figure business or whatever. And a lot of times the, the formula that's prescripted for us um, is not a formula that really takes you know, self-care into account, balance, uh, and really even doing business actions that feel aligned to our values, right? Yes. And, and so that's kind of what, what you've been, and so um, actually one thing I mentioned earlier that I'd love for you to touch on is, you know, you, you, you talked about kind of um, finding connection again with the other aspects of your life. Uh, one of the important aspects, of course, has been your spiritual practice, and you spent some time in in in, in an ashram. Do you want to say a bit about that? I think that's that might be interesting for people to to learn about. Oh sure. Um, well, it's kind of an unusual background. I um, I began to meditate when I was around nineteen, and I'd, I'd been kind of a spiritual seeker by nature, you know, for whatever reason, from the time I was a little girl, and um, I. Um, you know, always loved looking at pictures of monks in my father's National Geographics and, and that sort of thing. And so um, the moment I graduated from undergraduate school, uh, much to my parents, you know, shock and horror, I, instead of going and getting the job that uh, they anticipated me getting, I moved into an ashram, a yoga and meditation community uh, where I lived and worked. And um, my, my time there un, unplanned turned into a 12-year um, wow. commitment, a 12 year yeah. lifestyle. And uh, so I emerged at age 34. And for the first time at age 34, I was, you know, sort of learning how to be an adult in the world in the way that most people do at maybe 22 or 25. And um, I, but I had had this, you know, 12 years of really being steeped very deeply in uh, meditation and uh, yoga before my knees became a problem and um, and just a lifestyle uh, you know where I was living with a lot of people with shared values and um, so you know it's something that became internalized for me and that uh, um, uh, you know it's just always there I, I yeah and and how maybe how's how are you bringing like what's one way you're bringing that uh, practice or that sort of, um, yeah, routine maybe into your current life or, or maybe another question to ask is how is that aspect of your life affecting your business? Today? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, I think it's affected my, my whole life and, uh, sort of returning to myself in the way that I'm doing my business now, this, this, you know, kind of really coming back to home in myself and creating the business, uh, from, 
you know, really my, my core uh, values, mm. like George said, and really paying a lot of attention, close attention to m who I really am and, and coming from that place. Um, I think the way that, you know, I meditate every day still, it's just sort of in my DNA, it's in my muscles. I, I can hardly walk or talk if I haven't meditated yet, you know, from after all these years of doing it, you know, right, right when I wake up, mm -hmm. I pretty much get up and sit down. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much how it works. And, um, and so um, I think what's, it, you know, the meditation helps immensely to um, reconnect with myself at a deep level to kind of process out uh, disturbing thoughts or, you know, um, meant some of the mental chatter that might have been residual from the previous day. It also, um, during my meditation, um, as a business owner, what I have found is that I just have this, like these tidal waves of creativity that that emerge very organically while I'm meditating. So I get my very best business ideas and um, and I solve my business, my, my most, you know, my biggest uh, business conundrums while I'm meditating very effortlessly. Because right? you're not doing it, you know, through thought. You're in a, you know, you're in a very relaxed state. And so the wisdom that we all have, every single one of us has within us, uh, just has free reign during that time. And um, so a tremendous amount, uh, you know, gets... Um, cleared and created and I've written whole articles just you know sitting there and you know I get up and just blurt out a whole article because I got really clear about you know it's a download as we say you know something that really mm -hmm. comes through uh, when I'm not in the way you know my mind isn't in the way and all the doing isn't in the way yeah that's great yeah. Uh, is there anything you want to say in terms of our work together that um, I know we've been working on, you know, one of the things is your, your marketing and, and your, your Facebook presence. And what have you learned or how have you grown in, in that arena that right. you can share? Sure. So that's been massive for me. Um, I did, uh, you know, I had a, a business Facebook page and a personal page and uh, I wasn't doing anything <laughs> with anything. So when I started working with George, you know, I just didn't really know how, I didn't know how to do it in a way that, you know, what made sense, what was going to be like productive and any of that. Um, and so um, George is super skilled, super, super knowledgeable um, regarding social media and marketing online. And um, so uh, he's taught me how to um, create posts and, you know, boost posts and, make sure that uh, the type of people that I work best with, that I love to work with, and that might resonate with my work, um, know that I'm there, uh, that I have a, a visible virtual presence in a way that feels uh, very honest and very, um, you know, just very much, uh, very authentic, you know, place for me to express a lot of what I want to share with the world. And uh, what's happened, so I, I never thought of Facebook as a list building tool. I had, you know, been under the impression that only hosting telesummits, which I had done, which, uh, which you know, was great, but it was an, a, a massive amount of work. Uh, and, um, you know, certain other techniques were the way to go. Um, none of them were super appealing to me. So because they, they just required massive amounts of energy and preoccupation from some of the other things I love to do. But I learned through my work with George that, by marketing, you know, my writing and my, uh, you know, the things I offer, my workshops and things of that nature um, in a targeted way, that those people who are really connecting with you, really aligned with you, choose then to like your page and choose then to, you know, to go to my website and get more involved with my work. And it, that's a very wonderful, exciting feeling. So the numbers my numbers have, have increased exponentially on my business Facebook page without completely independent of me asking anybody to like my, my page. I do occasionally ask people to like my page that I know or that I've known for some time that might not be aware I even you know, have a business page. But all kinds of people from all over the world um, have come into my universe through this. And, um, and so what I want to say is that you know, it's not necessarily thousands of people at this moment, um, but it's, 
what I have found with my work is the right people, you know, will invest in my services over and over again and will love working with each other and they'll grow exponentially. And that's more meaningful to me ultimately than having a massive community with a, with a low open rate, let's say on my news, I have a very high open rate and a smallish community, but they're responsive and, and, and uh, that feels great to me. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. I'm so glad you mentioned uh, when it comes to the audience, really, uh, I've discovered the same thing, you know, the quality is really much more important than the quantity. Um, yeah, and, and I think it's much more fulfilling for our business and makes our business sustainable and thriving because we're working with the people that we, we love working with and we don't have to contend with the um, sort of the, the, maybe even sometimes spam, you know, when you grow your audience at your level, you start right. getting a lot of engagement so-called that isn't really engagement, the kind of engagement that you, you would like. So, but, mm. but let, let's start to wrap it up, wrap up this um, interview. I want to be respectful of your time. And um, maybe you can share with those watching about something about your offerings. I think people will be interested to hear. You've got um, a couple of areas, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you share what, what you feel is most relevant right now. Sure. Oh, sure. Thank you so much. Um, so um, one thing, and I think George is going to share a link uh, if you're interested. You know, I, I do a lot of work with the psychology of money and uh, and how money is, you know, the way we do money is the way we do so many other things and particularly love, actually, you know, in addition to ob the obvious impact on our bank account and our business. Um, so I have a money archetype personality quiz on my homepage on my website and George is going to give you the link to uh, where you can opt in to uh, take that quiz free of charge and, and it's automated and you'll get audit, you'll get a set of automated results immediately a snapshot of your your um, money personality profile um, and uh, and there'll be an invitation also to connect with me free of charge as well if you are interested um, I'm also going to do a, a workshop next week um, that's just $25 that takes this archetypal work to the next level called Own Your, uh, uh, hmm. <laughs> um, Own Your Money Types and Empower Your Money Story. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, you, you can find out more about that once you're, once you're in the loop with me. Uh, if you, go to, if you, you know, want to check out my Michelle Atlas coaching on Facebook, it's all there. So Great, wonderful. Some ways to connect if you'd like. Perfect, perfect. Um, thank you, Michelle. Is there anything else you want to mention before we before we head out? Um, I don't think so. You know, I, I it feels like you know, I don't want to you know dilute or confuse any of the great content that we've talked about. So, um, right. I'll, you know. Yeah. Well, so. I I know that people will be. Uh, I hope people will follow your your content. I think it'll be helpful for them and they'll continue to see your growth uh, on social media and uh, we'll probably loop back around at some point and, and update everyone on how you're doing. So um, thanks so much for being here and everyone, I hope you got some uplifting information and, and uh, benefit from watching this and I will see you in the next video. Thanks again, Michelle. You're so welcome. Thanks.